Peter Neville, Stephen Morey and myself started Illusion in the mid-80s. It was about Melbourne and it was a, and a Melbourne ensemble. It very rapidly moved out of that specific location and became very much a national and ultimately very much a global thing. We come together to play some of the most challenging and difficult aesthetics in contemporary music. We wanted to do something that was both personal, intelligent, and rigorous and explorative of, of what we knew as new music. Elysian and its activities could never be mainstream in the same way that other kinds of musics can become mainstream or the status quo. Because I think that uh, walking that tightrope, that razor's edge, continually over a long period of time, that's a huge challenge to, to how, how do you sustain your focus in that way? How do you constantly put yourself out there on the edge uh, without the need to, at any stage to say, no, we'll play it a bit more safely this time? One, one of the most compelling items in the exhibition for me is the very first letter that the British composer Richard Barrett wrote. You're looking at this letter, which has got the most amazing and beautiful calligraphy, and there's an emotion that comes, comes out of that. And it's the very first uh, contact, if you like. And that, that, for me, is something that's particularly special. Every time I'm on stage with the ensemble, I'm looking on one side and I'm seeing Tristan Williams and Ben Marks and on another side I'm seeing Joan Wright or Paula Ray, Peter Neville. It, it's just a, a, a list of who's who in Australian instrumental and performance practice and it's just amazing to have all of that concentrated in, in one group. I remember a particular experience on a European tour in 1994 where I was sitting in the ensemble during the performance page turning for Darryl, Darryl's guitar part playing Richard Barrett. There was this sense of a living, breathing organism that I was privy to, an incredible privilege. So I think this is one of the really special things about sonic art and its relationship to an exhibition within a gallery and that, that is that the actual artist can be present, not just through a digital representation or through the artefact, but through the physicality of what they actually do within the acoustic of that environment. That's incredibly important and that's been certainly an enormously valued feature of this exhibition.